You've probably heard about these guys already. These are pads. They're basically touchscreens with system on module boards that can host Clipper. I'm not explaining Clipper again. I'm sorry. Basically, fast printing, easy modding, web interface, that sort of thing. It's really awesome. Check it out. So we have two of these pads in the shop with the, the Sonic pad from Creality and the FL Sun speeder pad. So how do they compare to each other and to Clipper on a Pi or even Marlin's new input chip? Well, let's find out. So first is the Creality Sonic pad. And this is a seven inch touchscreen, 1024 by 600 resolution, two gigs of RAM, eight gigs of ROM, and four ports for USBs and a webcam if you want it. And it also has support for an ADXL 345 accelerometer and it has Wi-Fi and LAN interface as well. On the USB, you'll find the manual, tutorials, a version of Creality print and stuff like that. Unlike most printers, I would advise you not to maniacally delete the contents of the USB <laughs> because it sort of comes with the STLs for the adapters to attach the accelerometer to the printer. So you sort of need that. Although for some reason, the manual and the USB contents say nothing about the mount for the accelerometer for the bed which is sort of important. Uh, in fact, it says nothing in the manual. This is what it says. Creality hits it again. So here's the deal. The Creality Sonic Pad has 21 pre-configured profiles for Creality printers, but some ore as well. And it's super easy to install. Just plug it in, start it up, you go past the region settings, data protection, yada, yada, yada. And then you select the printer that you have and you have 21 pre-configured profiles for it. So it's, it is really cool. Now you may notice there are different versions available other than the standard Ender 3 or Ender 3 ABL versions. The pad needs to take into account the chip being used on the printer's main board. So you might have an Ender 3 Pro with an 8-bit board, in which case you have an AT Mega chip or an Ender 3 Pro with a 4.2.2 board where you have an STM32F104 chip, or you might have an Ender 3S1 with either an STM32F103 or STM32F401 chip. You may also have an Ender 3 Pro V2 with a GD chip, in which case you can just use the standard STM32F103 profile. It is really important that you get this right, but to check, you can just open up the cover of the printer and take a look at the chip. It'll have it printed on it right there. Once you have selected the printer, you can upload the firmware profile to the SD card and flash it to your printer. To flash the firmware, it's the same way as you normally do on a 32-bit board. You turn off the printer, put in the SD card, turn it on, and wait. Depending on the kind of printer you're using, you'll just see the splash screen load or maybe nothing at all. It won't go past that, but it'll be connected to the pad and you go through a few tests, check if the motors and fans are working okay, and then you'll be ready to go. The next step is setting up your accelerometer to calibrate resonance control. With this feature, Clipper can compensate for some of the vibrations caused during accelerations and achieve much, much higher speeds. So just go to the advanced options and resonance control and follow the instructions. As mentioned before, Creality have completely denied the existence of a Y-axis mount for the accelerometer. We actually just use this clip that has a pretty secure hold. Seems fine. You can get these in any stationary store, usually as a kit. Uh, but we have also designed an STL for you to use with a few uh, Creality printers, so you can use that as well if you want. Link in the description below. So now we are done with the Creality Sonic Pad. That was a super quick setup, and that is what is awesome about the pads, is that it's really quick when you have a Creality pre-configured profile. But if you have modded the printer slightly, perhaps you got a new hot end with a new thermistor or a new extruder, then you can edit the printer.cfg file, which we'll get to now. Editing the CFG file is really easy. You can just go to the web interface on your browser and change what you need to change. For a good guide on how to edit the CFG files, take a look here. Nero3D did a great intro to it. I have also heard that some users needed to run a PID tune for their printer, even if it was a pre-configured profile, uh, which is odd, obviously. So the printers that we used, they actually didn't need anything. But if you do notice any fluctuating temperatures, then it's a good idea to run a PID tune, and that is super easy to do. You can just go to the web interface and enter the console command here. This will heat up the nozzle to 215 degrees and perform the PID tune. Then you can issue the command save underscore config, which will save the PID values to the CFG file and restart your printer. There is also an option to do this via the screen itself. So let's take a look at the web interface. If you're not familiar with Clipper web interfaces, then this particular one, which is default on the Sonic Pad, is called Fluid. And it is nice, I guess, but for me coming from using a different one called Mainsail, it feels a bit clunky. So if you're a Mainsail lover, you can just go to the same IP address with an added port number 8819 
and boom, there you go, you got Maintail. On the web interface, you can import files to print, adjust your machine limits like speed and acceleration. You can even preview slice models when you were using Cura, Creality Slicer, Prusa Slicer, and Super Slicer to slice things. You can interact with the console like we did with the PID tune. You can have a webcam to set up time lapses or view your own print processes in real time or other things. By the way, I have tried to update the pad's firmware via Wi-Fi or, or LAN, uh, but it always says it's up to date. I'm not sure why, because it was clearly not up to date. Uh, because of this, I went to the Creality website and on the downloads folder, you can get the most up to date firmware. Uh, this sorted out just fine, uh, except it deleted all my configs. So just watch out for that. Okay, so let's set up the next printer. Now, as mentioned before, Creality have great support for their pre-configured profiles for their own printers. But as of January 13th, they now have support for the Prusa Mini, which is awesome. The Prusa Mini has an STM32F407 chip, and this is really, really cool. But if you want to use another printer or a third-party board, well, how hard is it to set up? Hi. So these are the chips that are suitable for the Sonic Pad right now. So that might not mean that much to a lot of people, but if you are considering getting the Sonic Pad for a non-Creality printer, then all you need to do is check uh, Clipper's config files for the CFG file, and then you'll know if it's suitable for the printer that you have with that processor chip. You can find Clipper's GitHub's config list here. You can find details on tons of printers, which board they use and which processor chip is used, and all the other info that you need to set up a third-party printer. For instance, Want to use the Sonic Pad on an Anycubic Viper? Well, just check out the CFG file and you'll see that it uses a clone of the STM32F103 chip named the GD32F103. This GD Giga Devices chip is used in a lot of printers now and actually lots of the Creality 4.2.2 boards with the Ender 3 Pro and V2 and others have this GD chip. And there is an option for selecting this chip in the printer setup on the pad. Of course, not all printers are compatible, but if you do a quick search online, you'll see a bunch of printers being used with the Sonic Pad. To set up the Sonic Pad with a third-party board or printer, you'll need to do the following. Once your first printer is set up, you can plug in your third-party printer, then press on Pick Printer on the pad screen. Go to the end of the list and click on Other Models. It will bring you to a window asking you for a CFG file and also giving you the option to get a hardware serial port ID and to compile the motherboard firmware. First thing to do is to get the hardware serial port ID. Copy this down. Find your CFG file on the Clipper GitHub. For us, we'll be using an old PTT SKR E3 mini version two, which we have lying around in the workshop. And we have a CFG file for it right here. You now need to scroll down to the line for the MCU. You can replace everything after the by-id forward slash with the hardware serial port ID you copied. Depending on how much you have modded your printer, you may need to change a bit here and there, like the values for the steppers, the ABL, PID values, and the thermistors, etc. If you have edited your printer firmware yourself, it is a good idea to have your modded firmware open so you can make sure everything fits. Now put the CFG file on the USB, rename it to printer.cfg, and insert it into the pad. Now you can click on motherboard firmware compile. Here's a bunch of settings that you can choose, and the correct values can be found on the CFG file. So choose the MCU frame and processor model. For us, it's the E3 Mini version 2. It is an STM32F103 processor. Our board does not use a Giga device clone, so just leave that untagged. The bootloader offset is 28 KIB. Clock reference can be left alone. Communication interface is a USB connection and the vendor ID stuff can also be left alone. Last thing is the GPIO pins at the bottom. Check your CFG file again and copy the values in. For us, it is exclamation mark PA14. The exclamation mark is important because it inverts the logic for the specified pins. This could be pretty useful when you're setting up the printer. So if you wonder why your motors are going in reverse, you may need to just add or remove the exclamation mark in the CFG for the motor pins. Now you can click on generate and ready the file for export to the USB you have inserted. It should say it is generated. You can now export the file by pressing OK and it will then export to the USB. Now that you have the file, rename the file name to firmware.bin, put the SD card in the 3D printer when it is off, turn it on, and it should boot, and depending on the printer slash board, the screen will go blank and stay blank. Yeah, I know it's the same thing that happens when your firmware flash fails. 
or it will show the splash screen after about 10 to 15 seconds. Congrats, your printer is flashed. You can now go back to the printer CFG screen, make sure that your printer CFG file is located on the USB and click next. It should say it is detected and that the file was loaded. It was, so let's continue. Another safeguard to ensure that the firmware is flashed and the printer is attached to the pad. So click OK again, and then it will say the firmware has been flashed successfully and you can now begin the self-test process. The only thing to do now is resonance calibration, which unfortunately is a bit difficult because you've modded your x-axis assembly, uh, but that's what you get for Frankensteining your printer. Okay, so that's the Sonic pad, and now we can turn to the speeder pad. So what's the difference? Well, at first glance, there's not really that much that differs. Very similar to the Sonic pad, and I don't want to go into too much detail because a lot is just really the same, but the main differences are it has only three USB ports, so max three, or even less if you're using a webcam. It has one gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes of ROM, and weirdly enough, it doesn't come with the stand that comes with the speeder pad when you get it with the V400. Strange, but you could print it, I guess, if you wanted. And like for reality, it also has several pre-configured profiles for FLSUN printers and some for others as well. Hi again. So with the FLSUN Super Racer, that initially had a SKR 1.3 board, which uses an LPC 1768 processor chip, and that is actually not supported by the speeder pad for some reason. But later versions of the Super Racer have a MKS Robin mainboard, and that is actually supported. So just something in to watch out for. So what about third-party printers? Well, yeah, there is some compatibility. FLSUN have these profiles to download from their website, pre-configured. A is for the Ender 3 S1 or the S1 Pro. B is for the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, the Ender 3 V2 or the Ender 3 Neo versions. This is with the STM F103 chips. C is for the CR10 series using the AT Mega 2560 chip. These are 8-bit boards. And D is for the Anycubic Viper. And finally, E is the CR10S Pro V2, which is also using the 8-bit uh, board with the AT Mega 2560 chip. Okay, that's a shorter list, but Creality have a wider range of printers available, so it makes sense that they would just have more pre-configured profiles. If you are technically inclined, then it should be possible to make this list longer, because FLSUN have released a system image that allows users to update and gain SSH access to the board. This is getting into the nitty-gritty of the board, which is really cool if you want to do that. Further information can be found down below in the description. The Sonic Pad actually does allow SSH access, but it seems to be a bit more complicated to get in there and actually do things. It's sort of been hit and miss with a lot of people. Uh, so you might be limited to just the chips that are available right now, but still that is a lot of printers to choose from. But the whole point of the pad is that you can use Clipper easily. So I don't think Creality or FLSUN made it their initial goal to open up the pads for SSH access. It is cool that FLSUN have included this, uh, but I think the pre-configured profiles are the way to go here. The pads are primarily for new users to upgrade to Clipper without the hassle of understanding all of these technical things and everything else that goes with it. So what is the verdict? Well, the Sonic Pad definitely has more options when it comes to pre-configured profiles for Creality printers. And it does have extra USBs too. The speeder pad seems to underperform in this respect, but it does allow relatively easy access to changing things. What if you were going to compare this to something like Marlin? So for those of you unaware, Marlin now has an input shaping feature which allows high speed printing like Clipper. Uh, Marlin is free. It's compatible with a million different boards. I wouldn't say that Marlin is difficult to use, but compared to Clipper, with this awesome user interface being so fast and allows you to mod things if you want really, really quickly, I mean, it's it's Quicksilver versus Drax. Clipper is just so easy to do this. And you can't run a Marlin board with Wi-Fi unless you have something like an ESP module or a Pi. And then if you have a Pi, well, why don't you get Clipper on the Pi? So I love Marlin. I really love Marlin, but I get why people would want Clipper for easy editing and user interface. And for that, Clipper's learning curve is really, 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 really easy on the pads compared to Marlin or other Clipper methods. So let's get down to brass tacks. For those of you who are relatively new to 3D printing, the pads are awesome. And the Creality Sliding Pad is something I would highly recommend. And for those of you who are more familiar with printing and are printing with a few different printers perhaps, then the Sonic Pad can also make things way, way easier and smoother and unrestricted. 
But for those of you who just care about high speed and don't really have an issue with taking their time editing firmware or using the screen that came with the printer to begin with, then you might as well just get Marlin. This has been my two cents on the pads. If you have had a different experiences or find that the pad suits you in different ways, then let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you guys another time. Later.